What's glorious with you guys? Johan Francis CSCS. This right here is Ego Killer. Thanks for joining me. Every time we do this, you guys I know are doing a lot better than you were before. And it's our job to work together in this Voltron of acceptance and union to figure out a little bit something about the human condition. Spread the word, all right? Tell more people about it. I'm realizing one thing and I wanted to share this with you guys. Let me know. Comment below. Comment anywhere you want, here or on the YouTube. As you get older, do you feel like you're missing out? Right? Because there's a beautiful thing that comes with age. With age, if you notice in your older family members or older like friends, parents that you have around, maybe in your own family, the less shits you give. And it is a freeing endeavor when you don't give a fuck as much as you used to when you were younger. What, I, what I've noticed people do is they let more and more of their ego fall by the wayside. This proves a point that it takes much energy, much wattage and newtons, many calories to uphold that ego. And as you get older, you realize I ain't got all this energy to be dragging around this ball and chain called my ego for no reason at all. And so what we notice is the less shits are given, the older we get. But going along with that, I feel like let me know if you guys are like this where, yeah, you want that to happen. You want to feel more confident. You want the aplomb to speak before you do, right? You want to walk around with your chest out, your chin up, right? You want to feel confident and look confident everywhere you go. But you also want to be sharp. So today I'm going to talk about that. I want to, why want, probably, maybe some of you would want to start every single day of your life on 10. I've talked about this before, right? But what if it was a little bit more easy than just practicing a routine? It had everything to do with literally popping a pill. What if there was a pill, right? We're finding all types of pills in today's society that do all manner of side effect inducing cure-alls. But what if there was a pill that every time you took it, first thing in the morning, you were on 10. You were the funniest you were ever gonna be. You were the happiest you were gonna be for the day. You were the most romantic. You were the best looking. You were the best dressed for the day. I'm not talking about like you're the penultimate expression of business, you know, acumen. You're over here pointing, wearing a big suit, making the big deals, or whatever it is, right? You're not out here getting all the A's. You're just doing the best that you could possibly be. You're maxing out your own personal potential. Who wouldn't take that pill? It's like that movie Limitless, right? Who wouldn't take that pill? I would like to think that I'm not endorsing that at all, by the way, but I'd like to think that there's a way to do that. Well, guess what? There might be, all right? So over the years, I've got to talk with a lot of professionals in my business, all right? And what I've noticed from a lot of professionals, practitioners, trainers, counselors, coaches, therapists, strength people, yogis, whoever is on this kind of journey where we're trying to inspire and motivate, motivators the same, athletes, who help other athletes, if you're helping in a physical capacity, you know that there is great power in healing. All right? You know that there's great power in healing. I'll argue that if you're listening to Ego Killer right now, you know that there is great power in healing. All healing all the time. How did we get like that? How did people who want to stay ultra positive all the time, for example, how did they get like that? Is it like a natural thing or are you hacking your mind? So that's what we're about to talk about today. We're going to talk about the idea of neuroplasticity. We're going to talk about abilities that you can learn to hack your mind. How ego gets in the way of that because it actually does. And if you can find a way to alleviate the ego, right? Like your old homie, the OG, the triple OG that just don't give a damn at the end of the day because she knows that she's got confidence working for her, right? You got you got granny over here just running the family show, you know, laying down the law, doing the most and being a loving character. Why? Because she has the beautiful vantage of age and understanding that ego does little else the older you get than hold you back. Understand that today. Let's try to figure it out. So if we define all these things, I think that we can do it. 
I think that we're actually going to be able to get to a place where we are more <laughs> neuroplastic, right? Which just means you reorganize the way that your brain thinks and works. You know this is already true because if you're an addict, you've known someone that's been addicted. And I'm not just talking about really hard addictions, but someone that really likes eating granola by the handful. And just like, oh, you're addicted to that, right? Or someone that loves playing video games. Something that's not like a hardcore addiction, but definitely is hardwired into the mind. And then they give it up. It, there's a, like, there's like a, um, a little withdrawal. So we know that you can rewire the brain, or better yet, reorganize it. That's neuroplasticity. Imagine if you were able to reorganize the way that you think for the day, such that you're going to have the best day ever, and all you have to do is kind of tap into what it is. We're going to talk about that. The brain's ability to reorganize itself, form new, more efficient neural connections throughout life, and prune old ones or what we talk about when we talk about that neuroplasticity. When we talk about hacking the brain, when we talk about eliciting the best potential we can, we talk about making shortcuts to do that. Shortcuts to reorganize your brain. Shortcuts. We cut out what's bad for us, we think about what's good, and only do what's positive. Jettisoning all the bad stuff. Take that out to the curb, leave that on the curb, and what's left is nothing but gold. There's a lot of ways that you guys can reorganize inside the gym. It's what we have come to find out in strength training is like always practicing new stuff. Why? Well, your brain, again, your brain is, it. so first off, if you're really neuroelastic, Think about elasticity, right? You're able to bounce from idea to idea. You're able to think underneath the pressures and rigors of a work life. You know, you're able to kind of keep cognition going when you're, you know, in traffic and you get out. When you have, maybe you have a lot of kids or young ones running around. We know that that could be actually pretty, you know, um, energy consuming. And then to still be able to work after taking care of a lot of kids. Maybe it's coming up with new ideas on the fly if you have presentations that you give. All of these things are stuff that I've heard that you guys have to deal with on a daily. And in the gym to promote this, I oftentimes will tell people like you have to be practicing a little bit. Not of everything, but try to do as much as you can physically. Because if you do that you get more elastic. You're able to bounce from idea to moment with your best mental acumen still up on game. This has been proven to shrink your amygdala, which is the amygdala is the part of the brain that I always think of as the reptilian part, right? But it is basically like the fear harvesting part of the brain, the part of the brain that the ego just loves, right? that part of the brain starts to be less prominent in our thinking. Prefrontal cortex activity picks up and all the like. Very important, very important if we're out here trying to break habits, that the fear-based part of our brain, our physical brain, is the size of a marble compared to the rest of it, isn't it? Isn't that the most important? So how do we do that? There's a lot of ways to actually increase our plasticity. So like I said, in the gym, it has everything to do with trying different stuff. Literally, the way you organize and move your body has everything to do with what you tell your brain to move first, last, what order, and in what tension. You're literally using muscle memory to contract your body in certain orbits, and directions, and that is the very definition of neuroplasticity. It's almost too literal. It's brain move. Move brain, move brain left, <laughs> move brain right. Like That is neuroplasticity at its best. It's been proven, right? Studies show that you doing your aerobic workouts, running, brisk 
walking like you used to do during the pandemic, right? When all the gyms were closed, you're out here brisk walking. One minute bench pressing 315, the next briskly walking, right? In a brisk <laughs> autumn eve, get hit in the face with a maple leaf. Um, it's been shown that aerobic exercise hit stimulate stimulate factors and proteins that are essential for neuroplasticity all right so i just learned about one of these factors all right i just learned about one of these it's called brain derived neurotrophic factor all right and it just supports neural growth we talk about neuroplasticity being basically like you taking the correct so let's just say you move to a new city you don't know how to get from your house Right? You don't know how to get to, from the crib to the job site. So what are you going to do? The first d- two months is like me when I was a kid on the bus. Like the first two months that you have a new site that you have to show up for every day, you're going to take all the freaking wrong streets. Eventually, you start to figure out the right route. And then that route gets you to where you're going faster. Then what happens is you get two routes that equally are 10 miles right apart, but one's more efficient. The lights are shorter. There's less stop signs. That right there is your brain being really elastic. It's using the best highway to get from one thought to the completion of an action. That is neuroplasticity, all right? It's efficiency. It's speed. What happens when you pick the route in my example? You get rid of the other routes. So there's only the shortcut. That's what happens when you get this BDNF. It supports using more of those highways and supports downgrading all those dead ends. Aerobic exercise, believe it or not, gets gets it popping. So does cycling, right? So does cycling. But under the auspices of a very narrow-minded ego, an ego that sees you doing nothing elastic, (laughs) And likes to see you bronze statue stiff. Right? Likes to see you making no moves. Likes to see that grass grow underneath your feet. How are you supposed to be really neuroelastic? How are you supposed to hack your brain? How are you going to be one of the, the many that believe in healing? To go to my previous example... A lot of the people involved in fitness and on that side, healthcare, can be need almost endlessly optimistic. And isn't that annoying sometimes? You're trying to have a real life, real in the field conversation about the struggle. And all these folks like me want to do is pull out some, you know, silver lining playbook type stuff and be eternally optimistic. Well, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. There's a reason that your friendly neighborhood recovering addict, right, that just (laughs) came out the house, the last house on the block right there, is always preaching growth. He or she is in a growth mindset. He or she is in a state of healing. That state of healing is learned. It's learned and applied. They've actually been in a place that person in that example a lot of people in healthcare who care your favorite coach and trainer who's really optimistic they've learned how to heal so much and so long that it just becomes part of their daily life if you ask me those are going to be more of your immovable object type people in your life those are your north stars those are the best coaches all right rigidity is one of the ways that ego takes you down a notch the most ego driven folks that we ever met <clears throat> in our daily life that we ever met in our daily are hyper rigid with the way they see the world you try to bring them some of that new and they're just like what the hell is this crap to everything though not just like not just like the new um the new drill the new drill the new drill song by old boy out there in the east coast or whatever sorry but it's not just like that. It's a lot of stuff. That rigid mindset, that poverty scarcity mindset, you guys, makes you very, very rigid. 
Maybe even if you know someone that's really smart and logical. That rigid mindset makes it really hard at the end of the day for improvement to happen. If you can kind of draw out, they might not be the most elastic um, uh, cognitively. Like, like I mean, in terms of how they want to grow and conquer challenges in their life. You want to be in a growth mindset rather than a fixed one. One thing that I just recently learned is that studies have proven that students who are praised for effort, all right, students who are praised for effort are oftentimes more resilient in the face of challenges where those similar students who are praised for being smart are more likely to give up when stuff becomes really hard. And it goes back to one thing that I say for all you smarty smart pants out there, all y'all really, really smart, do not lean on your intelligence. All right. Which, by the way, you think neuroplasticity has everything to do with intelligence? No. It has everything to do with your effort and your ego and your ability to reform and accept what's in front of you and reorganize it. Not your intelligence. Why? Because intelligence is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift from your parents, from your genome, right? From your great, 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 great ancestors from the homeland. You didn't work for that. So it makes perfect sense to me personally that if you lean on that your whole life, when stuff gets tough, all you're about to do is blame them, right? Aw, man, you ain't explaining well enough. That teacher was kind of an idiot. They ain't speak good enough English for me. Well, if you're so smart, you can figure out how to learn. That's what I think of when I think of neuroplasticity. Like, getting better at learning stuff. Learning stuff in the gym. Learning and applying the stuff that you learned in the gym when coach is gone. Learning new workouts. Learning new things about your body. Being open to learning those, those new things. It is a direct correlative to like being really loose and mobile. Because if you're loose and mobile, right, your hips don't like freeze up every time you bend over to pick up the remote. Trying to watch that Hulu at night, that tiny little remote that they, you know, that little remote now, right? Not like the 80s where the remote was the size of like your car door. No, no, no. The remotes now, you need a magnifying glass. You bend down, you got stiff hamstrings, you snap both of your hamstrings. Well, now you can't do anything fitness related. And you become more closed off to the idea that you ever could. Maybe you enjoyed being on a bicycle, but your hamstrings are so tight. You're never going to think about that. Your workouts are only going to be strength-based, strength maybe, compounding the problem. Be open. Be mobile, right? If you are open to diverse perspectives, having conversations, having conversations with people that you feel you might not have a lot in common with, but you remember, you let the ego kind of chill Hey, kick back a little bit, all right? I know this person isn't from the same part of town as me, but we're having a good vibe with each other. We're able to talk to each other, whatever, whatever. And guess what? Those differences don't actually matter at the end of the day because nobody's asking me to fill out a ballot right this second. That stuff doesn't matter as much as it should. So much of our DNA is actually alike, so much so that the tiniest, tiny, infinitesimally small part of our DNA that does call for different you know physical features how long your damn toenails are how dark your irises are compared to you know someone that's from the same background as you that's like a tiny part of your dna most of your dna most of it is like a potato anyway look part of what we talk about when we talk about neuroplasticity right is acknowledging and observing your own thoughts without judgment when you meditate. Meditate has been a strong tool for myself. Learning to meditate has been a strong tool for a lot of practitioners. Not even if it has everything to do with actually sitting there and going to a guided meditation with a lot of people and some ancient tome in your hands. But... Just thinking about meditation, correct breathing, posturing up, and doing those things, 
right? Maybe it's listening to someone speak about a subject you care about and doing nothing else but listening to what they say, reflecting in on it, and breathing slow. That is a type of meditation, at least in that short, fleeting moment. Meditation itself, where you're actually thinking and allowing thoughts to drift away, have them without judgment, enhances your brain's ability to bounce around, shrinks the amygdala, thickens the prefrontal cortex, right? So that's another practice that you can employ. That the uh, brain-derived neutral factor ensures the survival of neurons, hit intervals, strength training can help, right? But we mostly talk about aerobic training, right? Being mindful, slowing down a little bit. It's really funny. Over, you know, like, answer the question, all right? Leave an answer in the comments. Why is working out good? Why is working out good? All you got to do is answer that question. Why is it good to work out? Why are you encouraging your 58-year-old dad who's a curmudgeon and wears three pairs of underwear <laughs> every week? And just doesn't work out since he worked out back in the 70s, right? When he was trying out for the um, <laughs> for the semi-pro football team, right? Won't work out. Why are you convincing him to work out? Why are you convincing your sister that does all of her spare time either studying or drinking to work out? Because it cures everything, Right? It's just one of those things that's a cure-all. Think of it in the context of your fitness. Being really long, mobile, and agile helps you move better. You move better, you lift better. You lift better, you're stronger. You're stronger, you're less prone to injury. You're able to recruit more muscles for tasks under specific tensions, for example. You work out better without injury. You can do it for longer. Without being burned out. Do it for longer without being burned out. You build more muscle. Build more muscle. You have more less fat on your body. Less fat, longer life. And the list just goes on and on, right? It's a holistic thing. This is similar. Think of your neuroplasticity as that. All right? So what did we come up with? Did we come up with a pill? Can we encapsulate all this stuff and then... Throw it down our throat early in the morning. Hopefully it's not the size of the uh, twin lab amino acids from the 90s that I used to try and take. <laughs> right? That thing was the size of the Hulu remote. Um, no. Hopefully it's the size of a Tic Tac. <laughs> what, what, what can we derive from this? Well, we can think about this. I think building your neuroplasticity is a long play. It's not going to happen just tomorrow, but it can start tomorrow. Our goal is to shrink the part of our brain that is locked in or used to adapting to fear. Which, by the way, in our society, the more sophisticated and urbane it is, we respond a lot to fear. A lot, my friends. I don't just mean sometimes. I mean a lot. And I don't think you guys know it sometimes. We want to make sure that we're in a space where repetition is the name of the game. Right? Thinking through things that give us efficient thought patterns. And doing so over time. Repeated. Sounds like a workout to me. Sounds like a quality workout. Then trying new workouts from there. Right? Do complex, complex tasks that require process. A process that you can imprint, blueprint, I guess blueprint, then imprint, and do over and over again. Maybe you like making t shirts and you like mixing the ink for the t shirts. You like making the screens that you're going to print on. Maybe you like mixing music together, and there's a process. You download, you put it in your playlist. 
make it repeatable. That helps your neuroplasticity. Again, shrinking that reptile mind, divorcing ourselves from that place that the ego loves, right? Consistent practice. Very good for us. Think about that meditation right there. Think about how that meditation allows you guys to reduce stress, increase your tolerance for stress. Emotionally regulate itself. Talk about emotions, right? Understanding how your EQ works, your emotional intelligence. Knowing that, yo, if somebody, man, messes with me today, they're going to get it. Someone mess, I wish someone would fuck with me today, right? Because I'm just waiting to unload. Knowing that if you feel like that, you probably are going to say, you know what? Probably today I'm just going to not say that much. I'm going to be the quiet one today. That's another great way. You know, that's important, right? That's important. I wish someone would try me today. Nah, well, it's important. What's most important, what becomes most important for you guys is to steer away from situations that build stress because that that's going to happen anyway right so we want to steer ourselves away from those situations as much as we possibly can i always think about it right and i'll pound the podium about it there's enough drama and stress in daily life some of us had you know situations some of you were born right in situations with high drama high trauma so you don't need to bring it on more in life yourself it's going to happen it's better you deal with it and it happens than to invite a bunch of it and then fall flat another way right another way that um we can we can increase the way our mind works the bendiness of our mind and brain is doing that um doing those uh puzzles doing those games apparently there's a lot of games i think we've kind of figured out that gaming gaming quality gaming actually helps your plasticity right and I know that they have brain games out there. There is um, no kind of uh, hard evidence that says, yes, those type of games help your plasticity. But just in general, right, finding ways to play and game helps because we're building new pathways. It's all about building new pathways and finding new highways to that destination. And lastly, um, get out there and talk to folks, right? Get out there and be part of something. That something doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to be mega important, but it does have to be mega important to and for you, to and for your people, your squad, your tribe. Very, very, very crucial because we also learn to build, collect perspectives from others. That helps us in life when we learn, you know. Oh, what's over that mountain? I've never been there before. My people have never been over there on that side, you know, of the landscape. You have? Tell me more. Just straight up information helps. But also, also gives us a chance to think and project about possible opportunities that we hear about from other people in jobs and in life. All right. And again, Try to contract as many muscle groups as you can in a given week in different modalities. All of these are going to be what we do on a daily. So starting tomorrow, whether it is playing, starting the active process of play in your daily life can help. Okay? No pill for that. Just get out there and do it. You can hit up your exercise, your aerobic exercise. For me and my money, that's about to be the best one. Because you can also develop a new skill, which is another thing that you can start doing tomorrow, in the gym. So basically, like I said before, the cure-all, just go to the gym, right? Just get in there and start working out. You're thinking about running on the treadmill, hop off that thing, go do that rower, go do that, that wind bike. Learn a new skill. Very important for your neuroplasticity. How else are we gonna throw this down our throat as a pill? Suppress the ego and start having a growth mindset. Before you hop out of bed, you're already you're already having that meditative moment, thinking about having a good day. Do those things, and you guys will be better for it. I guarantee it. Also, I guess at the end of the day, you could always try just taking actual pills. 
they have nootropics, they have mood elevators, things of that nature, right, that might just put you in a growth mindset or might put you in another type of mindset, which may or may not be about growth. Maybe. Maybe you start to grow something out of your ear. I don't know. But with the nootropics, those aren't like hard and fast proven, right? I know we have nootropics that are derived from like different like mushrooms and things of that nature and then there's just straight up psilocybin you know on some aaron Rodgers type stuff which okay that's definitely a mindset reorganization of your brain like to say the least mostly if you start to hear colors then yeah i think your brain's reorganized itself maybe the mashed potatoes maybe not so yeah there is a way to do it without any of that stuff, you could just pop actual pills, but I think the verdict is still out on that. The verdict's still out on whether or not that's really effective. And then if you take your traditional psych- psychedelics and other narcotics and mind-altering substances, we do know that there is a measure of probable um, benefit in much, much, much smaller than recreational doses. You almost want to take it as if there was um, a medicinal dosage behind it. And unfortunately, that's not really common knowledge. So by and large, you're on your own with that one. And the jury mostly is still out. All right. Just know that. Once you know that, you have all you need to go do the thing and feel great. And I hope you do. Stay up.